<laughs> Pat, guess what, Pat? Guess what? What? Guess what, Pat? What? I have a billion dollar idea, man. Dude, your ideas suck. Dude, come on. Yeah. That's a billion dollar idea. You know how many times I have to hear messages like this, Pat, I got a billion dollar idea, Pat. We're going to be the next billion dollar company. I was on a podcast earlier today. A guy asked me, Pat, what do you do if you're 18 years old and you got an incredible idea? I said, stop focusing on having so many great ideas. Pat, that doesn't make any sense. Stop focusing on great ideas. Why? I don't get what you're saying. Let me explain to you why. Here's why. Say I have two people here, okay? On this end, I have somebody who's got the most ridiculous idea in the world. It's, it's the next Uber, okay? It's the next Facebook. It's the next whatever you want to call it. Great idea. I have a guy here on this side who spent two years mastering a skill set while this guy's just come, trying to come up with great ideas. This guy here spent two years learning how to sell. Day and night, he mastered the art of selling, selling, selling. If I have to bet on who is more likelihood to eventually make more money in life, I'm putting all my money on this guy over this guy. Let me explain to you why, okay? So I have some examples here for you, which will validate why I'm making this point to you. We have five examples, and I promise you two of them, you won't even recognize who they are. But you'll know once I make a point to you here. Mark Zuckerberg, everyone knows, Facebook, December 2004, they got started. By the way, he didn't even come out with the ideas. It's the Winkle, Winkle Voss, what is their name? Winkle Voss or something like that? They came out with the ideas. The Winkle Voss twins came out with the idea of Facebook, but he took it, you can call it, steal it, whatever you want to call it. And he started coding Facebook, okay? We have Mark Zuckerberg, we have Steve Wozniak, who learned how to create the computer. That's April 1st, 76. We have McDonald's brothers, who started McDonald's, April 1555. We have Nick Swim, Swinmurn. By the way, do you even know who Nick Swinmurn is? You know, I don't even know who Nick Swinmurn is. Do you know who Nick Swinmurn is? Can you guess who Nick Swinmurn is? Stop Googling it. Stop Googling it and just stay with the episode. You don't know who Nick Swinmurn is, but you will hear in a minute. Do you know who Martin Eberhard is? Oh my gosh. Martin Eberhard, wherever you are, I hope you don't watch this episode. But there is a Martin Eberhard out there. Now watch this here. All of these guys were great in ideas. Zuckerberg takes the idea from the Winklevoss brothers, okay? And he starts coding with his friend Edward. They raise $18,000 from Edward. There's so many different stories here. And they create the Facebook. It was mainly for, for you know, Harvard's yearbook was called the Facebook. You've seen a movie before. If you haven't, you should watch the social network. It's a net, uh, social network, social. right? Great movie to watch. And then all of a sudden, Mark Zuckerberg runs into a sales guy named Sean Parker. If you don't know who Sean Parker is, Sean Parker was the founder of Napster. This dude knows how to sell. The sales guy who sold a vision because Mark said this could be a million dollar business. Zuck, uh, Parker said, no, no, this is a billion dollar idea. He sold the vision to everybody. He came in and sold the idea. Now Mark is worth 56 billion. By the way, Sean Parker, the sales guy, is worth 2.6 billion. You know what the Winklevoss brothers who came up with the idea are worth? 200 million dollars between the both of them because that's where they were settled with their loss at 140 million and 60 million dollars. That's what they got, the idea goes. Now of course you're saying, Pat, at least they're worth 200 million. Yes, I would much rather be the sales guy. Now let's go to the next example. Stay with me here. Steve Wozniak. I've interviewed Steve Wozniak many years ago. If you haven't seen it, it's a fascinating interview. Wozniak found a sales guy named Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs knew how to sell. Steve Jobs had no clue what he was doing. Steve Jobs, when he worked at Atari, he would ask him to do the coding for him because he didn't know how to do the coding. He knew what he was doing. He was the idea guy. He was a sales guy. If he was alive today, his net worth would be roughly $10 billion. I think Wozniak has $100, $200 million. Nothing wrong with that. Still good. But the sales guy learned how to sell an idea to the rest of the people. McDonald Brothers, if you haven't seen the movie Foundry, you got to watch it. These guys knew how to start a restaurant in San Bernardino, Val San Bernardino, which I've been to. It was an hour from, away from where I used to live to. I just was there a couple months ago. They're doing an incredible job. And one day, a guy named Ray Kroc, who's a sales guy, is selling milkshake machines. One day he gets an order, he's in St. Louis, Missouri, he gets an order from McDonald Brothers saying we need eight machines. He says, what? 
Is this a mistake? No, we need eight machines, and a guy hangs up. Ray Kroc decides to drive to San Bernardino. He goes there and says, oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is ridiculous. This, this can be something big. What if we go out there and scale this? And what if we do this? And he starts selling it because he sold vision. He went to investors, country clubs. He sold the vision of McDonald's. Ray Kroc. Do you guys know Ray Kroc, I believe, gave them $2.6 million to buy out the name McDonald's. And then after he bought out McDonald's, guess what they couldn't use? Their own name, McDonald's. And Ray Kroc, the sales guy, took McDonald's to where it's at right now. I think there's 38, 40,000 McDonald's around the world. When he died, his net worth was $1.5 billion. His wife and him gave the $1.5 billion, I believe, to some charities, all of it, 100% of it. That's the sales guy. Ne next one here, Nick Swinmurn. Nick Swinmurn. You don't know who Nick Swinmurn is. Let me tell you who Nick Swinmurn is. Nick Swinmurn is the founder of Zappos. Holy moly. But you don't know who Nick Swinmurn is. Nick Swinmurn is the founder of Zappos, and he finds a sales guy. I guarantee you, you've heard of Tony Shea delivering happiness. Tony Shea comes in, okay, and he says, we can turn this thing into a monstrosity. And he does. Tony Shea goes from what he was worth to now roughly shy of a billion dollars. He's around 850. By the way, Nick was smart. He kept his shares. He's worth around a billion dollars today. Now the next one, Martin Eberhard. Do you know who Martin Eberhard is? By this time, I think you probably researched his name to see who it is because you're so curious and you couldn't wait three minutes. Now let me tell you who it is if you haven't yet. Martin Eberhard is the original founder of Tesla. He started Tesla. He started his Tesla. Elon Musk is not the founder, okay? He is the founder of Tesla. He started Tesla. Elon Musk shows up and he says, this thing can be bigger than any one of you guys think it is. Because he sold the vision, because he's a sales guy. He sold the vision to the world. You and I bought it. Tesla is now worth, Tesla is now worth what it's worth. And Elon Musk is worth somewhere shy of $20 billion. We're gonna put his name over here, okay? So why, what's my point here to you? Oh my gosh, if I get another message with another person telling me they got a billion dollar idea that if I team up with them, we're gonna go out there and do this and this and that, all this other stuff, great, I like it, because I know how to sell a vision once I buy into a product. I'm all good with this, I don't have a problem with that. But I'm talking to you, I also want you to make a lot of money. Focus on becoming an incredible salesperson. Focus on communication. Focus on how to sell. Focus on looking at stuff where you can go out there and communicate it to other people. Focus on seeing the vision of something, being able to sell a product to somebody else. When I got out of the military, I couldn't sell anything to anybody. I couldn't sell anything to myself. I was the worst salesman in the world when I got out of the military. I looked like a bodybuilder because that's what I was at that time. My body was incredibly fit at that time, but I couldn't sell a membership to anybody. I worked at Bally's at Culver City. When I worked at Bally's at Culver City, it was the worst gym as, from all the Bally's because it was in a basement. The place smelled, it was old school, it was a Nautilus gym, sports connection gym. But we worked there, and the manager, there was a guy named Cisco who was phenomenal. He knew how to sell to anybody. And one day, I'm like, I can't sell, I gotta give up, I can't even go out there and do this. Cisco pulls me aside and he says the following thing to me. He says, Patrick, before you quit the game of sales, I believe you can do good in sales, but I want you to do something. I said, what's that? You need to go and learn how to sell at Fox Hills Mall. Fox Hills Mall was a mall in Culver City, okay? So I said, dude, if I can't sell memberships at a gym with all the equipment here, and it's a 36 month contract. You want me to sell memberships at a mall when no one even sees the gym and you want me to sign this 36 month contract with credit cards? Yes. Okay, I go to Fox Hills Mall. I'm standing at my booth at Fox Hills Mall. I don't want to talk to anybody. I'm frightened of rejection. I don't want to talk to a single soul. Then all of a sudden these two other guys, I notice they're around the booth, I'm behind the booth because this is my hiding spot, comfort zone. So slowly, I also come around the booth and I'm still trying to stay as close to the booth because it's a safe, safe place. Yeah, I saw these guys selling a couple members. I'm like, wait a minute, they sold a membership at the gym? That's crazy. That person signed a 36 month contract at the gym. I would have never done that. Then I said, maybe people will buy. So then I came out, I started talking to people freely and then all of a sudden one girl sat down, first girl that bought a membership from me at the gym, $75 on $33 a month. I'll never forget this. I said, if this girl just gave me your credit card, I can do it with everybody else. Then I started walking around the stores. Hey, have you been to Bally's Culver City? How come you never bought a membership? Are well, you a member with us? Why not? Then all of a sudden, a month later, I became the rookie of the month. Then I became the rookie of the year. Then I realized I can sell because I believe in the product of working out. This is so easy for me. 
Then the next thing was, I like financial services. Then I knew I could sell it, but I didn't come out with the product of insurance. I didn't come out with the product of annuities or stocks or bonds or mutual funds. I didn't invent those ideas. I learned how to sell. Then the idea kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. By the way, I'm here to tell you, the more you focus on learning how to sell and you improve that skill set, you are always on demand. People always need you for the rest of your career. Remember that. People always need a leader with sales who sees how they can move an army to a direction. They're always going to need someone like that. You need to focus on mastering your skill set and stop trying to come up with the next Apple idea or Snapchat or Facebook or any of that stuff that's going to turn into this billion dollar idea. I'm not telling you don't come up with ideas, but I'm going to tell you, we got a good idea here with a person that knows how to sell very well. This is going to sell to an investor more than a person who's got a ridiculous idea who has no clue how to sell. No one's going to invest into this. This one is going to do much better than this one. All day, every day, twice on Sunday. So guess what my recommendation to you is? Stop trying to be all these guys that think they're going to come out with the next idea that they're going to be the next Uber of whatever, or the next Facebook or the Snapchat. Spend a year or two, work under somebody who knows how to sell, and learn how to sell. Learn how to be an incredible communicator. Put yourself out in front of people that's a little bit comfortable, uncomfortable, and see what happens to you in the world of business. Because when you have to choose here, you can choose who you want to be. Do you want to be McDonald's brothers? Do you want to be any of these guys? Without these guys, none of this happens. I suggest you learn how to sell. I suggest you learn how to sell and you become the person that knows how to communicate a product to somebody else. Anyways, you got any questions, any thoughts, any other stories here that you know about, you want to share with us that's similar to this, comment on the bottom. You got any questions, thoughts, also comment on the bottom. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Let me make a case to you why I believe you need to subscribe to Value Team and also join the notification squad. Look, there's two ways you can learn about business. One of the ways is go to college. Learn a bunch of theories by professors who have probably never ran a business before. Or you can watch Value Tainment, ran by entrepreneurs who have built and sold businesses. And you can learn from our mistakes and what we did right. And by the way, I'm willing to bet anybody who goes and takes this boring route versus watches Value Tainment, I'm putting my money. This person who watches Value Tainment is going to beat the person who goes to college. You don't believe me? Test me on this. This is why I'm so certain you need to subscribe to Value Tainment and learn the content so you can also be a successful entrepreneur.